listen. Listen, 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 listen. I'm finna, I'm finna help you out. I'm finna help you out. I know it's cold and I know it's raining and all that stuff on the outside, but I know you want to get a loose, don't you? I know you want to get loose, don't you, Rob? We're going to get loose, D. Anticipation for what you are about to do. It's been a long time, but anticipation have come to summation. And Lord is over. <laughs> it's been a long struggle. It's over right now. We thank you for the transition. We thank you for all that you've taken us through. We thank you for all that you've done to develop us and grow us and make us ready for your glory to manifest beginning this day and beginning this hour. Right now in Jesus' name. We ask and we pray. Amen. Oh, praise his name. Praise his name. If, uh, if, you are, if you are sitting, if you are sitting uh, behind 
uh, where uh, if you're sitting behind where our ushers are standing, I need you to move in front. I need you to move in front. Erica, come on, Erica, come on. Second Samuel chapter chapter nine. God been waiting. To, how many of y'all really been really been really been fasting? You been you really been fasting? Amen. You really been fasting. Uh, uh, the lowest as a flavored water at Walmart, I found it really helped me out. Yeah, it really helped me out, been able to get me over the hump from not being able to jump. I done fooled around and started drinking chocolate milk just to get me through. No, I'm gone, gone crazy. Amen. 
praise his name to get me, get me through. Let me, let me tell you three things gonna, gonna take place. Number one, uh, restitution is gonna take place in your life today. You hear me? Everybody that's in this place that have brought their self in the presence of God, restitution is going to take place today. The second thing I want to tell you, you going to, it don't have nothing to do with the sermon or where it's delivered. This is just what God said. Redemption is going to take place today. Your redemption is going to take place in your life. I'll explain them later on when I go through the service. But the last thing that to take place today is restoration. <laughs> restoration is for to take place in your life today. Amen. Praise his name. Second Samuel chapter 9 and verse 1. David asks, is there anyone remaining from Saul's family that I can show kindness to because of Jonathan? There's some stuff that's going to happen to us, not because of us, but because of somebody else. Somebody we've been connected to uh, along the line just because things have gone on in your life. I want you to know that you ain't got to worry about it because it's already fixed before it got there. There was a servant of Saul's family named Ziba. They summoned him to David and the king said to him, are you Ziba? He said, yes, Lord, I'm your servant. You know I used to be Saul's servant before you became king, but now you king, I'm your servant. He replied, so the king asks, is there anything, anyone left from Saul's family that I can show kindness, kindness of God to? Ziba said to the king, there's still Jonathan's son, but uh, he crippled. He's a handicap. He lame in both feet. Don't matter what your condition is, when the king gonna show favor to you. Then the king asked him and said, where, where is he? Ziba answered the king and said, you'll find him in Lodabar at the house of Marker, the son of Amuel. Verse five. So the king had, the king David had had Mephibosheth bought from the house of Marker, the son of Amiel, and Lodabar. Mephibosheth, the son of David, the son of Jonathan, son of Saul, came to David, bowed down to the ground, and paid homage. And David said, Mephibosheth, I am your servant, he replied. Don't be afraid. You missed that, didn't you? Yeah, you missed it. You missed it. Let, let me give it to you. The king bowed down to a man that's handicapped, lame in both feet, and said, I'm your servant. Don't be afraid, David said to him, since I intended to show you kindness because of your father, Jonathan, I will restore to you all that your grandfather had. Your grandfather was the first king of Israel and everything that your grandfather had, I'm going to give it to you. Listen, listen, listen. And if anybody wonder if you just got an appointment with the king to eat one day, I want to tell you now, you can always eat at the king's table. Good boogly woogly. Come on, verse 8. Verse 8. Mephibosheth bowed down and said, what, what is your servant that you take interest 
and a dead dog like me. I want to tell you this morning, that's, that's some of y'all's problem. That you don't even see yourself as God sees you. God sees you as, you as you worthy of a blessing and you don't think you worthy. You got to see that if the king bowed down and God said, I got something for you, you ought to at least make yourself available and have an attitude that I want it and I'm going to get it and it's mine or mine. Then the king summoned Saul's servant Ziba and said to him, I have given to your master's grandson all belong to Saul and his family. Verse 10. You and your sons, you just missed that, didn't you? Yeah, you missed that. Let, let me give it to you. He's handicapped. He lame in feet, but he got two children. Miss Emma say, he ain't that sick, is he? Praise his name. You, your sons and your servants are to work the ground for him and you are to bring the crops of your master's grandson will have food to eat. But Mephibosheth, your master's grandson is always, will always eat at my table. And Ziba had 15 sons and 20 servants. Go ahead and skip to verse 13 right quick. However, Mephibosheth lived in Jerusalem because he always ate. Let me read. Can, can, can I reverse this? He was lame in both feet, but he always ate. At the king's table. He had some problems. He went through some changes, but he always ate. At the king's table. His, his problems, what he went through, could not stop him from eating. At the king's table. All right. Right, 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 right. Right quickly, blessings when you least expect them. Blessings when you least expect them. Praise his name. Now, this the story is a, is a story of, of a lame prince that was born in in Israel, and this this prince had it had it going on. His his daddy was the first king of Israel that was named Saul, and and his father was the first heir apparent of the king. That when the king died, his daddy would automatically take on the throne. He was also connected to the king and he was connected to the heir apparent to that of the throne. He was born in the lap of luxury. You just think about if your daddy, if your granddaddy was the king and your daddy going to be the king, you just think of what you have just because, not who you are, but because of who you're connected to. He was famous because who his granddaddy was and who his daddy was going to be and who he was going to be because if his daddy was king and his, and his father was at a power to the throne, that means when his daddy died that he would automatically take the place of his daddy. He was famous. Not only was he famous, he had friends. And whatever you, you got, whatever you got money, whatever you got popularity, whatever you got preeminent, whatever you got power, you got friends. You got friends not because of what the friends can do for you. You got friends for what you can do to your friends. And then along with friends come plenty of fun. They, they, they hung around them because whatever, whatever they wanted to drink, they could have. I'll talk back to you. Whatever they smoked, all the parties they got a chance to go to because they were Mephibosheth friends. 
wherever the king throw the ball, they could come to the ball. They could eat from the riches of the table because they had access because they were friends of Mephibosheth. You got some friends. I ain't saying you rich, but you got a whole lot of friends that you done helped get to some places that they could not have gotten if it wasn't for you. That's the reason they connected themselves to you because they knew you was better off than they were. But let me tell you something. I don't care how good you have it. I don't care how long you done had it. I don't care who you connected to that you got what you got. It does not stop bad things from happening. You got to understand that things, things will change. George Benson says nothing remains the same. When he was five years old, when he was five years old, there was a war broke out in Israel and his, his father and his grandfather got killed. And, and you see, you understand that when there was a nurse in the house and when, when the war broke out and the nurse saw the grandfather and the father get killed and she thought she got scared because she saw the Israelites running from the Philistines and so she said, they'll probably come to the castle and when they come to the palace, they're going to take the, the third boy that was our parent to be the king of Israel. So she picked him up and started running with him and in his excitement and in her haste, she dropped him and when she dropped him, he was injured so bad that he became lame in his feet and could not walk for the rest of his life. It amazing that sometimes we think we got it going on. Sometimes we think that we got the rabbit by the tail, not understanding that I don't care how good you got it going on. I don't care how long you had it, have it going on. And I don't care what kind of connections that you may have. Bad things just will happen. Bad things that happen. Let me tell you something, baby. I don't care nothing about how bad things happen to you. You got to understand that when bad things happen, if you are connected to the king, before bad things happen, he's already got it fixed. He's already got it fixed to bring you out. He's already got it fixed to bring you out. He's always got it fixed to make a way. He always got it fixed to make provisions for him because that's just what the king does. You have to understand that, that, that God, this thing was fixed even though Mephibosheth was laying and feeded. He had got dropped and his granddaddy, which was the king and his father, which was an heir apparent to the king, they had it fixed because when they, were, when they were young, that Jonathan, his daddy, invited a boy named David and David came to the king and he played music for the king. He played the harp and, and, and Jonathan, his daddy, fell in love with David even though his granddaddy would eventually try to kill him. And what happened was when they got in covenant, they made a covenant with one another. God fixed it where they fell in love with one another. And they made a covenant before God. And they said they would love each other and they would always treat each other family like they never been treated. God fixed that thing before everything happened to Mephibosheth that he had already set a covenant that it doesn't matter what happened to him, it was going to be fixed. It doesn't matter what happened he was going to be taken care of. It didn't matter. He was going to be provided for. It didn't matter. He was always going to sit at the king's table. It doesn't matter. He was going to eat royalty and be connected for the rest of his life. Let me let me tell you something. God told me to tell you what you are not understanding is that what you've been going through, what you've been tabernacling, I don't care how long it's been, it seemed like it's been a long journey, but I want you to know the reason you wasn't excited about what you was going through and how long you've been going through and the attack of the devil because you didn't understand it was fixed before the devil got there. It was 
not just a test. They give you a season to see if you were going to hold on, to see if you were going to hold out because God had it fixed. He wanted the devil to make him think that you were going to get the victory. But the devil knew from the beginning God had already worked things out. Watch this, watch it, watch And so David, when David became king, he sent, he sent for Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth understood that when you, but you was heir apparent to the throne, the new king would always kill your family and everything connected to the airship so you wouldn't overthrow the new kingdom. So when, when, when Mephibosheth heard the news that David was looking for him, Just think how you would react if you know that because your daddy got killed and because your, your grandfather got killed and you was next in line and you could raise up an uproar and overthrow the other king that the king was supposed to kill you and you found out that he was looking for you. Blessings when you least expect it. Some folk scared and they don't even know blessings on the way. Some folk running and hiding and they ought to be running toward God instead of running away from God, but they scared because they don't know blessings will show up when you least. You think somebody trying to kill you and God got them ready to give a blessing to you. You think somebody trying to block you and God got them opening doors for you. You think somebody's against you and God got that person working for you. Blessing, show up. When you least expect them. And then when God work things out, then you want to start hollering. Deep minutes for bad. But God turned it into good. Listen, listen, he says, watch this, watch this. He says, I'm looking for Mephibosheth. Where is he? Because I got some stuff that I want to give him. restitution. I want to compensate him. I, I want to restore to him some stuff that he lost because of the death of his father and his dad. God, um, God, God oh, have mercy, Lord. I, I'm, I'm preaching about the story, but I'm talking direct to you. I say, God told me to tell you, he got some stuff that he want to give back to you that you done lost because it wasn't your fault. Let me, let, let, let me tell you something. Let me tell you. Let me tell you something this morning. Everybody, everybody, you know, we always think, well, well, if they hadn't have did this, if they hadn't have done that, if this had done that, let me tell you, just because you're in a predicament, it don't necessarily mean it's your fault. It wasn't Mephibosheth's fault. He was carried by a nurse. The nurse was trying to do a good thing. She was trying to protect him. But sometimes folk that try to do the best for you, many times will wind up doing the worst for you. It's not your fault. Listen, listen. It don't matter when other folk think it's your fault. Because it ain't what they think. It's what God knows. He sends, he sends, he sends looking for, looking for Mephibosheth just so he can bless him. 
See, the key thing about the tragedy is, is that when we go through things and when we go through stuff and Satan is on our trail, what Satan does, he don't try, he don't stop our blessing. He just get us out of position that when the God come looking for us, we're not found at the place we supposed to be. Anytime you ain't the place where God placed you to be, you're going to miss your blessing. You're going to miss, let me tell you, there's a whole lot of folk that miss their blessing just because they got mad and left the place where God told them to be. There's a whole lot of people that miss their blessing because they done moved when they weren't supposed to move because they done lost their blessing. You got to stay where God put you. Stay whatever you go through. Go through it because when God, I didn't say if God come looking for you, I say when God. He looking, he, he looking, he looking. Now look, 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 look. I ain't got time to give a long explanation. All I want to do is to tell you, if you don't take my word for it, ask Jeremy. Jeremy's going through that. I tell Jeremy, just stay where you are. Just keep on praying. Just keep on being faithful. Just, and when we know it, God found him where he was supposed to be. Let me quit preaching because if I don't quit preaching about him, he'll jump off that back and it's good as God done restored him. The way God done blessed him, the way God done came looking for him, the way God done gave him, he'll jump off that back and I better move on and talk about somebody else. Not, on, not only is the Lord looking to, to restore you, but the second thing is that God looking for you, he's looking to redeem you. He's looking to redeem, he's looking to, he's looking to, he's looking to give you restitution. He's looking to give you something back that you done lost in the process even though it wasn't your fault. Satan is out to kill, steal, and destroy. But God is a restorer. Now look, I, you ain't got to take my word for it, but just go back and ask today. Just, just go back and ask Job. Job said, not only does God pay restitution, but, but he pays it through multiplicity. Y'all, 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 y'all missed that. Y'all missed that dick. Listen, listen, do, do, do me a favor. I, I, I need you to get this this morning. I need to get you this morning. Think about everything that done happened to you that it wasn't your fault that you done lost and then multiplied times two and then say, God, send it on down. I was, I was, I, I've been through, I, I, I've been going through something for, for about, for about 10 years and I've been tossed and turning, been pulled and, and, and tugged on and I got the news the other night on what was going to happen. I just looked at him and lay it down on me. Listen, 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 God, 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 God redeems me. In other words, God pays. He steps in and intercedes for what went wrong and makes it right. This, this, he said, okay, okay. This, this would happen, this would happen, this would happen, and this would happen, and this would happen, and this would happen, and this would happen. And this would happen. And let it, this happen, and this happen, and this happen. So, tell you what I'm going to do. Since redemption come to your house, I'm going to give you this and this and this for what you lost on that, that, and that. And then I'm going to give you this, that, and this for that, what you lost, and that, that, and that. And then, that 
just what I gave you for what you went through and what you lost. Now I'm finna add for pain and suffering. I'm gonna crank it up and not because I got to pay you for some pain and suffering that you went through that you shouldn't have got it while you were going through. So I'm gonna add something in, another dose. for the pain and the suffering that you went through. Now, I got, I done redeemed you. I done uh, paid you back some stuff that you lost. I done paid your pain and suffering. Now let me see, uh, have you lost any wages? he wasn't supposed to do what he done to you, Ellis. I know he wasn't done right, but I want you to know that the king is trying to make it right. He gonna set everything right that was wrong. Not only is he gonna give you pain and suffering, he gonna give you lost wages on top of that. The last thing, the last, not, not only is he going to redeem you, not only, not only did the Lord say to tell you. See, what makes this so good? I'm preaching a sermon and I'm talking, I'm talking about Saul, who was the first king of Israel. I'm talking about Jonathan, who made a covenant with David, with the king, who was the first heir apparent to the throne. I'm talking about Mephibosheth, who was third in line to become heir apparent to the throne. But I ain't, I ain't preaching to Saul. I ain't preaching to Jonathan. I ain't preaching to Mephibosheth. I'm talking to you. What God told me he gonna do for you. What God told me he done set up for you. How God say he gonna bless you. This, 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 this the last thing I'm gonna tell you that. And, and, and we gotta go. Not only, not, not, not only he gonna rest to give you restitution. Not only God say he, he gonna give you a redemption. But the last thing is. You ain't, you ain't ready. You ain't ready for this. God say, I'm going to restore you. You ever, you ever been, you ever been to uh, a raggedy, tore down, dilapidated building that so many people pass by and they didn't want they wouldn't even take a second look at it and somebody with great vision comes along and they comes along and fixes it up and restore it and when they restore it you wonder what happened did not, did it used to look like that? But now, somebody that's got the power, somebody that's got the resources, somebody that got the vision, that put their hands on it. And they done restored it. And they restored it in a manner. They fixed it and made it look like nothing was ever wrong with it. Nothing was ever wrong. Tell you this and I'm, and I'm through. There's some stuff I was supposed to call some people. 
and I was supposed to tell some folk, if you got to get here by Amalans this morning, you need to get here. And God said, uh-uh, 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 uh-uh,
under attack. Did you hear me? Jeremy, I say you under attack. And your wife is under attack. And there's some stuff you've been trying to do that the devil has been trying to block it. But I come to tell you this morning, you got restitution. You got redemption. And you got restoration. And right now, it shall come to pass. Right now it shall be. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here, girl. Come here. Come here. Come here. The only reason that you ain't where you need to be because you ain't let it go. You like Mephibosheth, you've been lame in the feet. Somebody dropped you. What happened to you wasn't your fault. What you been through wasn't your fault. What you had to go through wasn't your fault. I release it right now. In the name of Jesus, you shall be restored. You shall be redeemed. You take that eraser. And whatever happened in the past, whatever happened to through your daddy, whatever happened to your mama, what happened happened since your brother ain't got nothing to do with you. God, what Jesus? some things the other day just to show you that what he had for you it couldn't be stopped what they didn't want to give you was already fixed by the king wasn't it he took you through that to show you he took you through that to show them that he got his hands on you Don't you let nothing hinder you. Don't you let nothing set you back. You live for God all you can live. You do for God all you can do. You, you such a giver. You want there are people who try to speak in your spirit and try to make you not do what you do, what you know God didn't put in your heart to do. But you got to forget about people. You got to cast them away. You got to lay forth and go, God, with all you got. And God is going to redeem you. He's going to restitution. He's going to restore you you right now in Jesus name in Jesus name in Jesus name in Jesus name name. you gonna try to stand up if you want to in Jesus name you gonna try to fight it if you want to in Jesus name but if you just lift your hands and lay it here and let him take hold to your body and do everything that he needs to do with you in the name of Jesus. Right now. Right now. Right now. I know this. I know this sounds crazy, but I just got one word. Booyah! You ain't, you ain't, you ain't ready. You ain't ready. You ready? You ready? Okay, okay. I want you to just go ahead and get you some rest. Since you're ready. Jesus. (laughs) 
Sister Petra, I'm so I'm so frustrated with these finances. People won't do what they told to do, and they ought to be able to do better than what they supposed to do. It because they just won't do. They won't pay their tithe. They pay every nine. Then that ain't look like the church gonna be in trouble. Look like it. I don't care what it look like. It ain't gonna happen. God said you're gonna see a turnaround. You're gonna see a turnaround starting this day. You just believe in God. You just keep trusting God. You just keep doing what you're supposed to do and watch God have his way. <laughs> Lift up your head, O ye gates, and be lifted up. Your everlasting doors and the king of glory shall come in. Right now, right now, right now. Boy, what is you got on you that the devil wants you so bad? I'm talking to you, Dr. Red. What you got on you that the Lord wants you so bad? You got something. And he yanking on you. And he going to yank on you every which way he can. If he, if he can't get you through drugs, he going to try women. He going to do everything he, to drag you down. You want some of this? They got that they, they they, they, they got this thing that you say, if you want it, here it is. Come and get it. But you better hurry, 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 because it's in the name of Jesus right now. I rebuke everything that's not like you. Tell the devil to take his other hands off of him in Jesus' name. Listen, listen, I ain't even, I ain't even asked him if he wanted none of this. I just looked at him and he came a running. Right now in the name of Jesus, I rebuke all his friends that's trying to stop him from getting what God got from him. I rebuke everything that's in him that's not like you. Bless him, keep him and hold him. The Sari, yeah, yeah. That's that that cut in Jesus' name. It's over. It's over. It's over. It's over. The battle is over. It's it's over. The fight is over. The wrestle is over with. He been trying to take your family. He been trying to take you. He been trying to destroy you because he know what God got in you and what God wants to do for you. In Jesus' name, fire. Fire right now. Jesus name. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. 
They can't destroy you. They can't stop you. They can't block you. Great is he that's in you than he that is in the world. God gave you that humble spirit because that's why he take residence. That's why he lay. They can't touch that. They can't do nothing with that. They can never block that. They can never stop that. They can never starve you. You go eat at the king's table for the rest of your life. not by mind by my spirit said the Lord of all he showed you what he said he was going to show you he did exactly what he said he was going to it ain't no struggle it's a lie it, it ain't no hardship it's a lie he got his hands on you he got his hands on you. He should have got you when he had you. He should have blocked you when he had you, but it's too late. 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 God got something in this girl. God got something on this girl. She don't understand. Mama don't understand. But God going to take her to great places. God going to take her to great heights. God has found favor. And I bless you not every your efforts. I bless you not everything you do. I bless you everywhere you go. I pray God protection upon you. People ain't gonna even know why they do what they do for you because you belong to the king. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Cat! I just want to tell you, the door is already open. <laughs> the door is already open. The door is the door is already open. The door that you ran into this, doggone it. You ran into this. You ran into this. You ran into this. You ran in. You walk. You walk right in there. I want you to know that the door is open. The door is open. The door is open. The door is open. He done tried. He done tried his best. He done tried his best. He done worked on you every way he can. He done worked on you through the family. He done worked on you through the son. He done worked on you through parents. He done worked on you every which way he can. And everything that you thought you had, I want you to know that you got it. Everything he told you, you was going to have, I want you to know that it's going to be yours. You just keep walking. You just keep trusting. You just keep standing. You just keep holding your ground. Don't you waver to the left or to the right. It's already done. You go eat at the king's table. God gonna do for you. You know why? Because at first you was rejected him. <laughs> at first you were standoffish. But now you won't. You want all that he got for you. He said, I will give you the desires of your heart. 
and God gonna give it to you. He gonna bless you right now. Right now. Your friends can't go where you go. Leave them behind. You walking with the king. You don't know what to do. Jesus. Jesus. can protect them like you can. This might sound crazy, but whatever you got to do, if you got to tear the house down to protect them, tear it down. If you got to, if whatever you got to do to the dead is to protect them, you do it, God. I sent it to their house right now. Make it right. You restore it. Jesus. Build a fence around them. In Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> Lord. Look at Jesus. 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 Release.
your name set the prevalence on this place that it would never be the same your anointing your power deliverance healing breakthrough we give you this place that your presence may abide in this house we will never resist you we will run to you Lay your hands upon us. We don't mind. We just want to be what you want us to be and do what you want us to do. Right now. Mother Walker, I, 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 I need you to come to another level. I need you to trust me more than you do the doctor. I need you to trust me more than you do symptoms. I need you to trust me. I proved myself to you. They spoke. They spoke to your kidney and I fixed it. They spoke about taking your other leg and I stopped it. I blocked it. I need you to crank it up when it comes to me. To listen to my word and trust me at my word. Quit saying what's going to happen and don't, don't believe nothing's going to happen until I tell you it's going to happen. Emma, I hear the Lord say it, I'm right there. I'm right there. I got you in my arms. I'm right there. I'm just like a pillow that you lay on. I'm, I'm right there. And I will be there. And I will never leave you. And I will never forsake you. Because you have honored me. You have honored me in your prayers. You have honored me in your commitment. You have honored me in your faithfulness. And so I will bring restitution to your house. I will bring redemption to your house. I will bring restoration to your house. Matter of fact, I even use Curtis Ray as a testimony for you just to show you what I can do. What I did for him on yesterday was for you today to let you know that I'm still in control. I still got all power in my hands. (sighs) 
Lord, we 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 thank you. <laughs> yeah, don't you, Erica, Jeff, don't you, don't you doubt me? Don't you doubt me? Don't you, not one, don't you sway, not one to the left. It ain't what they say it is. I see some breaking in the atmosphere. 